For James Joyce fans across the world, June 16th is Bloomsday, the day one of the most difficult and most revered novels is celebrated grand style. Ulysses was written by the early modernist and published in 1922. And although the book was deemed very controversial at the time, it later became one of the masterpieces of 20th century literature. The entire book is set on a single day. And almost 100 years on, Ulysses is honored each year with Bloomsday celebrations. Which include dressing up as one of the characters in the book or simply according to the fashion of the early 20s. Fans start the day with the same breakfast as the protagonist, Leonard Bloom, eats fried livers, pork kidneys, mustard fingers, and tea. People around the world also reenact their favorite scenes from Ulysses, and the ones who flock to Dublin visit the places written about in the book. Now joining us from London to talk more about Bloomsday and its originator is Andrew Gibson. He is a professor of modern literature and theory and is the author of Joyce's Revenge, a book which takes a look at the history, politics and aesthetics in Joyce's Ulysses. Thank you so much for joining me, joining me today, Andrew. Now, Andrew, no other writer that I know about is associated with one specific day. Why is it that we remember James Joyce and his book Ulysses on June the 16th? Ulysses is actually set on June the 16th, 1904, and only that day. It's about a single day, a single day above all in the life of three people. But it's also a book that evokes the life of a city, Dublin, and its denizens throughout that day. It's also packed crowded with materials that were current at the time, contemporary material, whether it be popular culture, literatures, anthologies, advertisements, uh, music. Uh, that is all written into the novel, into its style and its language, styles and languages, as well as into its content and into its substance. For all of those reasons, June the 16th is um, always associated with Joyce, and particularly with the central character, Leopold Bloom, as he wanders around Dublin, constantly noting what is going on on the streets of Dublin on June the 16th, 1904. It's worth adding, finally, that uh, June the 16th, 1904, was actually the day on which Joyce first, first walked out with the most important woman in his life, Nora mm. Barnacle, who he lived with before marrying and then eventually married um, uh, for many years. Mm -hmm. Now, Andrew, tell me about some elements of his literature that made him achieve titles uh, as the greatest literary modernist. Modernism in the arts meant breaking with traditional forms, traditional molds, traditional established ideas, partly be that because of um, historical change. So many changes were afoot in the early to mid 20th century. Joyce spectacularly breaks with traditional forms, though having already shown, as say Picasso did, that he could master them. Dubliners, his collection of short stories, is a supreme exercise in traditional realism. But by the time he moves on to Ulysses, and then even more his last great work, Finnegan's Wake, Joyce is breaking with uh, traditional forms of literature, thought, rethinking what literature can tell us about experience, culture, social and political life. In a certain kind of way, he recasts or rewrites literature. Mm -hmm. And he does it probably more adventurously, uh, more grippingly, and more variously than any other writer or artist of the 20th century. Hence the fact that Ulysses, in particular, is regarded as the great 20th century literary masterpiece. Well, taking that into consideration, what is it about this famously difficult novel that inspires so many people to celebrate Bloomsday. I think 
uh, that there are many different reasons for celebrating Ulysses. You say famously difficult novel, and of course, in some ways it is very difficult, at least to start with. But it's a novel that, as I said um, earlier, is rooted in ordinary daily life ordinary daily experience, what goes through the minds of ordinary people, notably Leopold Bloom. Um, that, of course, is one reason why it's so celebrated. Another is that it's intellectually so daring, um, that it, uh, that it as I, as, as I said when I was talking about modernism, that it rethinks the world in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Another is its sheer breathtaking encyclopedic quality. There is simply so much in Ulysses, as there is again later in Finnegan's Wake, whether one's thinking about classical knowledge, knowledge of many cultures, of many literatures, um, the range of awareness in Ulysses is really quite staggering, mm -hmm. and so is the range of reference. Yes, Andrew, Joyce but said, of I course, go that he put enough reference. puzzles in it to keep the scholars busy for a thousand years, and that that was his way of ensuring immortality. Well, certainly, people will be puzzling over um, the uh, the enigmas, the cruxes of Ulysses for, I dare say, centuries to come. Andrew, I want to uh, just go back to your reference of how you said that Ulysses is uh, so famous because it's based on ordinary life, but there are a lot of novels that are based on ordinary life. Why is this one celebrated? Well, uh, other novels are celebrated too. Why is this one celebrated so, so widely and so enthusiastically? I suppose if we're thinking about Joyce's treatment of daily life, it has to do partly with the, way, the fact that he knows so much about everyday life, that it's so grounded, that it's always so particular, uh, that it, it's so saturated in ordinary life. For instance, Joyce actually wrote, he was living in Europe by, by the time he was writing Ulysses, of course, he wrote to his aunt to, to find out exactly how big the drop was behind a particular wall, how high the wall was, because one of his characters was going to jump down from it. The novel is full of that kind of precision. Um, and that, on the one hand, is what makes it such a remarkable portrait of everyday life. Mm. But also the fact, of course, that Joyce is so concerned with what goes through the minds of his characters. Uh, in particular, Leopold Bloom, though also Stephen Dedalus, Molly Bloom. He traces in the most minute detail how people respond to what is going on in everyday life. What it, the kind of way in which it manifests itself in consciousness, the way in which the kind of forms it takes in the mind. And that he, he does that so subtle and in su so subtly and in such a complex way that people have long been riveted by it, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrew Gibson, thank you so much for telling us about James Joyce and, of course, his amazing novel, Ulysses.